Good morning, good afternoon, uh, depending on your joining location. Thank you all for joining today's webinar. Uh, I hope you all are doing well. So by the way, uh, before, uh, Elin, can you hear me? Fine. Yes, all is good. Okay, super. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Satya Sahu from SAP APJ Innovation Office. I'm responsible for Industry 4.0 and uh, IoT innovation topics for the region. And I have with me Marvin, who is the manager of uh, Singapore Experience uh, Center. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Marvin. So, uh, so together we'll be presenting the following. So we have got a interesting uh, set of uh, content. So we will uh, start with uh, SAP's strategy on Industry 4.0. And we say that uh, industry 4.now. So we will talk a little bit about uh, what is uh, that you know, we are offering in the domain of industry 4.now. And SAP's role in the evolution of industry 4.0, okay, from uh, academia topic to how uh, the industry is taking this as a strategic uh, priority. Okay, what is that SAP's role? That is something we will be covering. And the solution offering, both from package solution and uh, the platform point of view, we will be covering that. And during the course, we will be sharing a few customer success stories. Okay, the unique thing about uh, this webinar is we will demonstrate industry photo scenarios. This is something we will be showing live from Singapore Experience Center. So you, you would have seen. Uh, Marvin, he is joining from the center, so he will open up his camera and, you know, will take us through a few of the uh, scenarios which is running in our center. So that will give you a feel of uh, how how customers can, uh, uh, you know, go or can uh, actually implement industry photo scenarios in a totality, not only in silos, but in totality. Okay, so this is in short uh, the agenda. So we all know that uh, Industry 4.0 is not uh, not you know something new. So around about 10 years ago, it's got launched as a concept to help companies to adopt uh, new technologies. And if you look into the definition, it's all about industrial transformation using the new digital technologies like IoT, machine learning, you know, artificial intelligence, so on and so forth. And why? Because this enables faster, more flexible, and more efficient processes to produce you know, highly customized product in a mass production environment and at a low cost. And we have been seeing the customers or the industry want to bring more and more predictive aspect into the areas, such as the maintenance, predictive maintenance, predictive quality, and how can you know, I optimize my inventory and safety and many, many more. Okay, and now if you look at uh, the potential so why customers are doing this, there is a huge potential, as you see in the left side, USP 3.7 trillion, okay, value creation potential of the manufacturers and suppliers by implementing Industry 4.0, and, uh, and this value is coming, you know, by 2025. And this is across optimizing the production, logistics, customer services, and we have been seeing the industry predominantly in the discrete industry they're coming up with something like, you know, uh, how can I offer product as a service? And how can I offer the additional value added services, which goes beyond a single product uh, selling, okay? And, you know, with the evolution of the embedded intelligence inside, uh, embedded intelligence and embedded sensors inside the product, so the, how the product is used and how the product is, you know, performing at the field. So these are some of the indications the R&D team of the OEM are getting, which is helping them to, you know, better innovate the product at a greater scale. And if you look at uh, the industry uh, adoption, so as in today, 68% uh, uh, considers industry 4.0 as a top priority and 41% are, you know, piloting. And 29% is they are not only like, you know, piloting, they are actually, you know, scaling to, to a greater, you know, heights and, you know, greater level. Okay. So that is the, uh, what it is and what is the value potential. And let's look into what is SAP's role in, you know, Industry 4.0 standard uh, uh, development. And as you see here, SAP has been part of the evolution of Industry 4.0 since its inception in 2011. And we have played an important role on the development of the standard 
which which was a academia a debate when it it got introduced to the market in 2011 now it becoming a strategic differentiator and in addition to this if you look at on the right side okay open industry foro alliance so this is something very unique about how we work with our uh, ecosystem and the partner and customers and uh, this this industry uh, foro alliance we founded uh, in the year of, year of you know 2018 okay together with seven other market leaders from various industries to create an interoperable industry foro solution and services so this is helping the companies how they can adopt industry foro in a phase wise manner okay and with that we introduced to uh, this year uh, okay our strategy with the nap industry 4 dot now and let's quickly look at uh, uh, like you know what is sap strategy on industry 4 dot now so so our aim is to move digitization of the customers and uh, industry foro initiatives of the customers from a factory focused initiative to a company wide and competitive uh, you know business strategy okay so when it got introduced it was predominantly customers are looking at purely from a plant or factory point of view how to improve the efficiency how to improve the oe and things like that and that got you know uh, extrapolated and now customers are thinking okay how can i manufacture a, ma a highly customized product in a mass production environment okay so so with this initiative it's it's going beyond factory so what so factory needs to factory or plant need to understand what is the customers you know requirement so we are talking about integrating with you know the let's say crm system with your plant you know your plant information system so so considering the new trend so our strategy focus on three business priorities of the customer one is everything has to be centered on the customer so their input and preferences are the source of all you do okay that is one once you understand the customer's preference and once you understand that the customer's preference is very very unique so you need to reinvent the production okay using intelligent assets and processes that dynamically adapt to production priorities and which delivers the customization at that scale okay and for discrete industry manufacturing this enables you know companies to manufacture individualized product at scale without compromising on quality and without losing the capacity for other industry it means it helps the companies to optimize the resource with the best of the new or latest technologies and lastly it's it's incomplete without connecting you know the entire company so that means your sales your production planning your like you know warehouse the logistics and your partner ec ecosystem like you know those who are supplying the raw material or the component the entire you know the value chain needs to be well integrated okay so so, so <clears throat> to summarize it focus on these three priorities center on the customer reinvent the production and the third is connect the entire company okay across different you know departments and let's look at uh, what is sap's offering which helps the companies on their industry foro journeys so its basis on uh, uh, four themes uh, or pillars which runs on a, a strong uh, business uh, technology platform and the themes are the following as you see here okay one is the intelligent uh, product okay it's all about a set of solutions that are designed to monitor and maximize the product the performance over time that is one and second is it helps the company the r&d team during the product design itself okay that is one and second is the intelligent uh, factory okay so this has got uh, intelligence to run as autonomously as possible when you say autonomously it's not only the plant automation systems like in level 1 level 2 it's not that it goes beyond like you know it's we're talking about process automation which is well integrated with your like you know plant automation as well as your enterprise you know processes as well so we are talking about like you know intelligent factory that have intelligence to run as autonomously as possible that is one while delivering both mass produced and individualized product at scale okay that that's what we say like you know the 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 plant at the factory can be smart if the processes are autonomous okay by integrating with like you know 
vertically as well as you know horizontally and the third is the intelligent assets okay it's a set of solutions what we offer that provides 360 degree view of the asset management okay and it brings the collaborative asset you know intelligence okay this is something unique and we have got a solution called asset intelligence network which is enabling us and the companies to you know take care of or maintain the asset in a collaborative manner by collaborating with the oems as well as with the service providers and also and you know in addition it also offers like you know the planning aspect the execution aspect of you know the asset management and in addition to this we do have you know predictive aspect of the asset management and lastly it's all about empowering people when you talk about digital transformation or industry four initiatives this requires a high level of change management when you talk about change management so the people need to be taken into like you know confidence and we have got uh, tools and solutions that are that are that can equip okay the people to take their decisions on real time and in fact it can give you the information well in advance so the decision can be taken before it becomes an issue okay and and lastly this is supported uh, by a, by you know the intelligent uh, technologies like uh, iot ml you know, machine learning and blockchain which is helping companies to connect anything and make the process more intelligent with the power of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I will go into the detail about each of this uh, four blocks, intelligent product, factory, asset, and uh, empowering people to highlight uh, the set of solutions what uh, we offer out of the box. So from intelligent product point of view, when like, you know, it's all about uh, designing, okay? And intelligent factory point of view, it's it's like you know once once the product is designed handing over to the manufacturing so that manufacturing can start the production at scale without too much of you know training and uh, and you know uh, of, uh, change management okay and when you talk about intelligent factory we have solutions which actually helps the companies not only to do the the production planning but also it also helps them to optimize so that you know more can be done with you know uh, the limited capacity that is one and we have got a set of solutions which can be deployed at the factory which helps the people at the plant to manufacture as well as you know it also can detect the quality at the right at the point of assembly which actually helps the companies to reach to a level where the best practices of quality management can be deployed okay and the third is the intelligent assets it covers the the uh, maintenance planning execution predictive aspect as well as the one which i said earlier the asset intelligence network which actually helps the companies to ma manage and maintain the asset by you know collaborating with the oems who is supplying the assets and you know with you know the department or you know the outsource companies who maintain the asset and last this lastly it's about empowering people so which which has got solutions in the areas of ehs environmental health and safety and this has got you know the solutions with respect to you know how how the how the how the you know applications or the uh, information can be delivered in mobile or like you know by giving them uh, instructions in 3d visual instructions so on and so forth so that you know their work people people's work can be you know enhanced and the productivity can be improved and this is supported uh, by uh, the technology platform from sap called business technology platform there are a set of you know partner solutions which is also available uh, in the app center okay so here i'll be covering a little bit about uh, <clears throat> the technology platform so here it's called you know business technology platform this brings uh, the intelligence to the company's uh, intelligent uh, enterprise strategy and it's an uh, integrated offering which comprises of four technology portfolios giving the end user the flexibility to choose sap technologies to quickly turn their data into the business value okay and this has got four pillars one is the application development and integration so using which you know one can integrate not only the application to application one can achieve a process integration and this has got tools and technologies using which a new application can be developed or the existing application or solution can be extended 
that is one and second is the database and data management and third we have got analytics in the areas of predictive analytics and the fourth is the intelligent uh, technologies which has got the capability in the areas of you know iot artificial intelligence and intelligent rpa robotic process automation system and conversational ai okay so this is about uh, how uh, how the business technology platform uh, looks like and uh, many of the capability what you see here are delivered uh, through sap cloud platform so one pl cloud platform having uh, uh, having uh, capability across this uh, four different uh, you know building blocks so with this let me show you a short video uh, this is the best practice video on enabling industry 40 so what it covers is the typical questions uh, from a manufacturer point of view how can i improve the operational readiness of my devices or my equipment that is one and second is how can i improve the customer satisfaction and customer loyalty by managing their assets okay so this also covers the techniques like digital twin uh, the predictive maintenance and finally feeding the usage data how the equipment is actually used by the end user and at the field feeding this data to the oems r and d department to improve the product design so this this video covers and it is an end to end real implementation which was showcased in hanover messe and uh, it's running in many of our customers uh, customer places as well and uh, the solutions shown here are part of industry 40 or portfolio so let me run this video How can we improve the operational readiness of our devices? How can we enhance customer satisfaction and loyalty? Nowadays, the delivery of the product is no longer the end of the deal. After customers have installed an intelligent device like our double seat valve in their plant, they can easily connect it to the Internet of Things via plug and play. The digital twin enables the device to register with all systems. Both individual components and the entire plant can continuously be monitored via the digital twin. Besides the advantages of predictive maintenance, machine learning can be used to constantly optimize the maintenance strategy and reduce downtimes and costs. The digital twin always shows the current status of its physical counterpart, even down to individual components. Maintenance and repair services can be fully automated. The system generates a service ticket and sends an order to the responsible technician. An app guides the technician to the device and helps to replace the right components in the right order with augmented reality support. Design to operate is not a linear process. The data collected during operation is the starting point for continuous product improvement. Such an end-to-end -end process enables completely new business models and is a real competitive advantage. Okay, so, so as you see here, the, the screens and uh, 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 the scope of the implementation, uh, what you see here is, is completely, there are many things are out of box and there are things which needs to be you know, uh, extended uh, using the business technology platform. That's what I said at the beginning. So from, from SAP side, the offering is a package solution plus you know, uh, a platform which is on which uh, most of the package solutions runs on top of it. Okay, so next is, uh, <clears throat> so next is, uh, yes, we all know that uh, the adoption of industry 4.0 uh, best practices are you know, the, the solutions and the processes vary from industry to industry. And, uh, and you know, to cover this in depth, uh, we came up with this two video playlist. Uh, okay, so we will we'll share with you. And uh, this has got a lot of material, which which actually helps uh, helps you to visualize how things can be implemented. Uh, you know, at a different industry industry level. That's one. And second is, if you want to still want to do 
more uh, you know uh, want to know more or want to see how our customers are running uh, okay so this is uh, this is another link uh, which is actually in you know, a textual pretty much not video okay but that gives a lot of indication that uh, what are the business processes typically the industry adopts from industry 4.0 point of view and it also maps into what uh, solutions from sap and what platform that would be required you know to achieve that particular you know process so uh, okay and in, in real time okay so this what we saw here is a video and uh, and you know uh, and uh, and more information about uh, where you can get more information so let's go to singapore experience center where we see things in life okay so with that let me give it to marvin marvin over to you thanks thanks i would thanks everybody well i hope so far uh, you guys you know grab uh, grasp uh, an understanding of really where uh, sap was playing of what we we talk about which is uh, industry 4.0 and of course the pillars are very important how do we create intelligent product how do we bring smart factories to life uh, how do we make sure that once the equipment is there working that uh, your field technician would have access and that the machine will talk to yourself as to how you can optimize the production so a lot is going on a lot of technology as well uh, because you know uh, nowadays you know what do you do with augmented reality how do you uh, you know, fight the, uh, the connectivity with Internet of Things. How do you integrate the blockchain across all the different suppliers? So all of those technology ultimately come together uh, to design this industry 4.0. And this is exactly what we're doing in our center. Uh, so, um, so basically, Saoui, if you could stop sharing the screen for a moment so we can have uh, the video uh, in, uh, in big. So if you can put me as the presenter, here you go. So please, if you're in the chat, uh, go in the speaker view. So you can see as much as possible. What I wanted to do is to do a, a live, um, you know, a live tour of the experience center that we have here. Uh, like I said, we have um, a thousand square meters basically where we can showcase all of those different technology that applies not only to manufacturing and industry 4.0 as you can imagine, but all the industries, right? So today, of course, we are gonna focusing on what you like, which is, you know, digital supply chain and manufacturing. However, bear in mind that there is a thousand plus innovation use case that SAP is developing across the world. And those space are literally the opportunity for us to bring them to life. And so for our customer to experience and really interact uh, with the system. Okay, so without further ado, uh, I will ask you some questions. So I, I'm hoping that uh, in the chat or in the Q&A, uh, you will provide me some answer because I will not continue until I hear something that is close to uh, what I expect as an answer, okay? All right, so uh, in order to illustrate what, you, uh, what Saul just presented, I thought uh, it'd be very useful for you to take you through a flow, right? A simple flow of actually how do you, uh, you know, from end-to-end, uh, -end, I will say product uh, production, down to the moment it's being consumed by the, uh, by the customers, of course, but if uh, any of the machinery of equipment need to be maintained. So let's start with the basic, right? The production. So what we have uh, in my back here uh, basically is a mini production shop floor. So I'm going to take you a little bit closer so you guys can see, you know, exactly how it looks like. But right now, uh, of course, production is off. Uh, what happened is if I turn the production on, I am monitoring everything that is happening now live on this mini version of a supply chain, basically. So if I'm looking right here, on this screen, right, what I do have, so you may not see exactly, but you, you will get the intent and you will understand what I mean, is all the data around potential quality issue, around potential failure rate. So I'm just gonna turn it off for a moment, otherwise you won't hear me. This is live from the center, as you can see. Uh, but here we will see all of the you know, potential issue before final assembly. So if one of the equipment, for example, is not the perfect shape or not the perfect weight, uh, which you can see, for example, if I put this little, you know, red product instead of the yellow one in the production line, look at what happened, right? I just put it now in there. All right, so here what I just received right now is basically an, an error message saying that it is, it didn't recognize, uh, it didn't recognize the color. Of course, you can combine different things. You can have machine learning that look at the quality. You can have sensors and RFID gates 
to really understand how much of the raw material need to go into your production to make sure that you actually uh, get the final product at the end without wastage and also making sure that any quality issue will be actually raised to the right supplier before again the final assembly of your product so altogether it's very useful if you really want to identify the bottlenecks uh, if you based on your planning as you can see here we are going below the planning rate uh, so all of the different manager will get the right information on time uh, and they will make sure to optimize the production uh, now a very good example of what you just saw here in the miniature version is what we do with Harley Davidson uh, so Harley Davidson, uh, in their factory in New York, in the United States, they used to have, you know, 42 of those buildings in different sites. Uh, there was 300 people working towards uh, delivering one motorcycle, highly customized, because that's what Harley Davidson's doing. Uh, they, you know, they uh, they have 100 customized points on their website. Uh, but eventually, at the end of the day, uh, there was a long time for the customer to get the motorcycle. So it was actually 21 days by really streamlining all the potential issues, uh, by bringing the supplier together, by sharing the right data across in those dashboards, I'd like to ask you the first question uh, to this group. How many, uh, you know, we're talking about 21 days for Alain Davidson to uh, build a motorcycle. Now, what is the reduced time you think we achieved by really streamlining all of their production line uh, thanks to uh, Internet of Things and analytics? So I'm hoping for some answers in the chat. Come on, don't be, ch don't be shy. So someone is saying, uh, so Magesh is saying uh, two days, it's slower than two days. Come on, guys, you can continue. I'm waiting for more, more information. Don't, don't be shy, just throw a number. We now know it's, it's slower than two days. So how long, how long can it be to, uh, to build a motorcycle? Anyone else? Two days? Two days is actually not that far, uh, I guess, but I can, I can give the answer soon now. Three days. No, so it's reduced, but it's actually six hours from the moment, uh, you know, all of the basically skeleton of the motorcycle hit the first production line to the moment the keys are ready for the customer to take it is six hours. Uh, so they really completely revamp it. Yes, correct. 21 days to six hours. You, you, you heard me correctly. Uh, so this, this way, you know, you're not only talking about you know, efficiency on the production line or how do you make sure that you, know, you can understand which supplier is delivering a good at a cheaper price. We're really impacting customer satisfaction here. Uh, most of their VIP customer, now what they do is they invite them in their factory uh, and you know, they can see their motorcycle being built from the morning and live with the motorcycle uh, in the afternoon. You know, uh, everything was a little uh, you know, glass of champagne customers loving it. So really redefining, uh, redefining the experience here. Let's move on because I don't want to take too long. Today is just a glimpse. So here, now that we have basically produced our goods, we can see how we can combine those analytics and uh, Internet of Things element together. Uh, now we're going to move to packaging, right? You've produced your good, you have your raw materials, so any type of product now will need to be packaged in some sense. So uh, there is different ways to, of course, create what we, what we can call a smart packaging. What we are looking at here in, uh, in the back is the example in pharmaceutical. And why pharmaceutical? Because, uh, you know, this is one of the industry really impacted uh, by, you know, different issues around traceability. Uh, you can think about product recall management. Uh, you know, what happened in China in 2008 uh, uh, with the uh, lactose, um, with the, you know, uh, lactose powder being infected. Uh, you can think about uh, as well counterfeiting, right? Counterfeiting is a big problem uh, in pharmaceutical. And actually, uh, for some of you now in the chat, here comes the second question. I want to understand if you actually know the impact of counterfeiting uh, in pharmaceutical. Do you know how many percent of the medicine you consume every day, any type of medicine, uh, is actually fake? Okay, so here goes the second question. Uh, and I'm going to look at the chat. So I'm going to repeat the question to everybody. I'm expecting some answer, guys. How many percent of the medicine you consume every day uh, is actually considered a fake medicine? That means it hasn't been produced by the original manufacturer. Come on, some ideas. You can throw any number, no worries. It's not going to be, any, uh, uh, it's not going to be a competition. Just to get an understanding of uh, the impact it can actually have on the market. They have said 
90% is quite high. That would mean that only 10% of all the medicine in the market is actually made by the real manufacturer. It's not that high, uh, Dave, but it's still a very uh, impressive number. According to the World Health Organization, worldwide is estimated around 15%. Now, if you look at the region in Asia, it's actually a third. A third mean that at some point in the manufacturing uh, process uh, and the delivery uh, and the packaging and so on, there's a third of those medicine that comes out from the black market straight into the pharmacist. Uh, so yes, uh, counterfeiting is very important. And this is what uh, you know, we are seeing with that machine. So um, just for you to see it in action, but you will get the understanding. Here, what I've done before, I've prepared um, you know, um, a batch of medicine, any type of batch that you can imagine, but this coding will then be created into uh, two-dimensional data matrix codes that will be inserted into the boxes. So that will be this box here, right? So if I start the production, of course, it's a small production here. We are not producing uh, you know, medicine. Uh, so however, if I take it here, what I can see uh, from this box is, and if you can see, right, welcome to the, yes, here you go. Welcome to SAP Expense Center. So I'm just creating a test batch, but all of that information, uh, so here, of course, it's only one box, uh, but if you have like, 5 million of Panadol to produce, uh, then it's very important where as soon as you're going to spread it across the different uh, countries that need to have it, how do you make sure that this is the panel that you created somewhere in China, right? Uh, so not only you have traceability, uh, but also uh, your supplier at any point of, of time during the supply chain by scanning this code, it will know the real uh, you know, provenance of, of this good, but it can also activate uh, a payment to a supplier, right? So we're going above the traceability and really streamlining uh, different business entities doing business together by not creating extra API, for example, or so on. You can really uh, think about the, the value of the blockchain here. And now extrapolate that to new businesses. Consumer product nowadays are trying to reduce uh, their carbon footprint. You know, we're all talking about a uh, circular economy. How do we make sure that we create a more sustainable business? Well, again, uh, blockchain is the answer to that because you can prove uh, the provenance of a good that you want to put back to market. Imagine it could be uh, any bottle or you know, glass bottle that you don't want to completely recycle, but instead just wash clean and send back again. Uh, so those are the type of example that you know, will help raising, I would say, the smart packaging, but also bring this industry forward now, uh, you know, spirit uh, into this process uh, of the production. Okay, cool. Thanks, David, for the answer. That is, uh, that is, that is very nice to see. Now for the, for the next one, I will, of course, you know, expect uh, all the people to participate. So um, now what we're doing is, so we've produced our goods, you know, we've packaged our goods, there will be other elements of the good that you know, need to be delivered. So in the center, we also have drones uh, that really literally um, you know, scan the boxes or use machine learning to recognize damages on the box and so on. Today, we won't have the time to go through all of this. However, what I wanted to show you is, you know, how do you combine uh, augmented reality capabilities into your system? Because the idea is, once you do all that production, the field technician on the ground really need to make sure that you know, it can maintain the asset, uh, that it can do so in a very safely manner. Uh, and this is what we're gonna see here. So the first thing is I'm gonna now share my screen. So you guys can all see me, but you can also see what's happening on this iPad. So let me share my screen now. Okay. All right. Give me a moment. Screen mirroring. Okay, Saul, please let me know to make sure that when you can see it, it will take a minute. Yes, we can see your iPad. Yes? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so um, if right now I'm a field technician. You can see that, right? Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm ready. I receive a work order basically on my iPad telling me, hey, one of our equipment uh, is actually potentially going to fail. Uh, so what you're going to see here is how you can not only provide, I will say, a full-on solution to, um, to operate and do your work order, but how you can bring element of you know, safety worker uh, and augmented reality uh, to create what we call the digital worker capabilities uh, to help them do their job more efficiently, more safely, and in a faster time. Okay, so right now I'm just going to connect, uh, sign in as uh, David. 
Okay, so this is my dashboard. Uh, right here, I can see you know, all of the different work order that I have to do. Uh, and what I'm interested, in, uh, interested about, and actually we're gonna activate this now, is okay, a potential low pressure in this machine uh, that I just created here. Is the sound okay? Can you hear me correct? Is it not too noisy in the back? Sorry, it's a factory. It's, it's all okay, Marvin. It's all okay. So here, um, now receiving that alert, because of course, uh, the data that this, uh, that this equipment will provide will tell you, hey, the pump pressure is too low, so I may, you know, I may actually um, break in a, few, in a few hours. What you can see is all the succession that you have in terms of the operation. I, of course, very easily, the machine will look back into the two years maintenance that it had, and it said low pressure mean this potential issues mean this potential action that you need to take for, to fix me. So this is all good, I can see this now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask the system to actually show me through the map, you know, where is this asset? Okay, so I'm gonna select, so I can see all my work order, the low pressure, the top left in the asset worker due today. You can get, you know, depending where you are, if it's one single office or a full map, you can decide where to go. But here it shows me basically more or less uh, the route that I need to take to get there. So I'm gonna start that, okay, and now, very, very interesting and important. I'm gonna put this, um, mm -hmm, this dashboard down, okay? What I want you to look at here, okay, that you can see on this dashboard is what the operation manager will see based on connected element. So all of that data right now is live and it's basically connected to the, you know, to the smart element that we have here. So if anything goes wrong about you know, potential gas, uh, temperature, about uh, the noise that it shouldn't be you know, uh, looked after by the field technician, that data will be fed to the system and you can basically look at it. So look, if I actually ignore this helmet now, right, what's gonna happen is, uh, it's gonna give me a, a noise threshold exceeded. So you can see that, I can say, okay, so I'm gonna leave this here and we're gonna do the heat test together. See how the heat evolve. If I'm taking this here, it's not for my hair, as you can see. get the idea, um, you know, there's a threshold as well. So if it's 41 degrees uh, in your helmet, it's probably a big issue here, but all of that information will be sent across to the operation to again, optimize uh, what's happening on, on your field uh, for all the field technician, by the way, not only, for, uh, not only for a single one. All right, so now it's good. We made sure that uh, the field technician itself uh, was safely going to the, uh, to the machine. So what we want to do now, mm -hmm, perfect. What I want to show you now is actually how do we operate a machine that imagine I have never seen before. Uh, so we're going to talk about, we're going to look after this box. This is a pressure box, could be for anything. It could be in oil and gas. Uh, it could be in the manufacturing, uh, you know, about you know, pharmaceutical as well. So imagine that it could be one of the components of your, um, you know, of your factory uh, that just delivers some data. Okay, so similarly, we are in our dashboard here still. What I want to make sure once I'm in front of this machine is to actually look at a different, uh, I will say, a different data set that you used to be in the past. So I'm going to quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create basically a digital twin of this asset. You can see here on the table. Perfect. Uh, give me a moment. Sorry, guys. Okay. So you could have this link directly to the, uh, to the work order, of course. But here we're doing it a little bit more manually. Okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do, even to make it more interesting, I'm gonna put it, give me a moment, I'm gonna duplicate the digital twin directly onto the app. Okay. So this way, okay, come back here. Uh -huh. Uh 
All right, now we got it. What I want to do is make sure. Yes. So you will see why I'm doing this in a moment because it's even easier. Okay, so now what I have, you can see here is I have duplicated my digital twin for a good reason and you will see that in a moment because I have all the information about uh, this particular machine. So let's put it up. Right, let's see what's, uh, what's going on. So based on all the sensors that are connected into this box, you can see all of the data about the inflow bound states. Uh, you can look at the, uh, the vibration, for example, into the motor. Here you can see the, the temperatures of the vapor state itself, uh, live, and you can see the present state as well, or the outbound uh, flow state. So what I'm interested about is looking at different set of data. First, on the top right corner, what I want to do is check the sound. Okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm recording a live data of the sound and the pressure to see what can be wrong. So I'm going to register that. And on the top left corner, you can see the sound pattern here. And I'm going to continue. I'm going to check the temperature. Right, so again, here with the live data that are happening both on the digital screen and the live, I can see where potentially the heat is coming from. And again, confirming that information and register it in the work order. I'm still going to continue. And I'm going to look more into detail about the van pump. Okay, so here I can look at the pressure reading. Change this, for example. Uh, the voltage rating and so on. Again, all of that information and basically registering it in the system. On the left side, you can see all the recording I'm doing on the asset itself. Uh, here, for example, if I want to have more detail about the equipment itself, what I can do is take it off in a digital manner. Right? So in that case, I can see exactly the different rotors, uh, the different equipment that potentially need to be fixed live. Uh, and on the top left corner, you will see the potential issue prediction that the system is giving me. The O-ring, the van, the Pude housing. So all of this is enough information to make a prediction about what needs to be fixed and how to change it. So, so far I'm happy with that. I'm gonna turn it off for the sound guys. Uh, and what I can also do in that case is to create a work order uh, directly from the system and tell them basically start a work order here. Excellent. You can even have a better view, I will say, of the exact component that I believe could be having an issue here in the 3D visualization tool, sorry. Uh, and then send that information across uh, to the team so that they know exactly what they have to fix when they, um, you know, when they ordering um, the different uh, pieces of equipment. So all of that information will basically be part of my work order, plus the recommendation on how to fix it if I already have all the equipment that I need. All good so far? How are we doing with time? Do we have time to show you how we continue empowering people? We are three minutes. We have three minutes, it's excellent, it's all I need. So actually, I'm gonna take you through a little walk in the center. So again, you know, there was really a, a short glimpse and view of how we can combine that augmented reality analytics into a work order uh, scenario. Of course, we, we also partner with Microsoft. So in some cases, digital worker can use, uh, you know, the, the Google glasses or the Microsoft HoloLens to really create a mixed reality directly in front of your face. Uh, however, we've seen that most of our customers, uh, especially you know, Industry 4.0, find it more practical to have access to directly into their phone. Who knows, you know, future is changing faster than we expect with, uh, you know, especially with the current crisis. So everybody might have you know, those little lenses in their eyes in the future that, where we will use the mixed reality. We don't know yet. However, uh, the beauty is we can integrate with all of the different, I will say, hardware uh, to provide that information. So I'm gonna stop sharing for now. And my last two minutes, what I want to take you through is, so we've seen the whole flow of you know, production, packaging, uh, maintenance of the equipment, uh, but sometimes it's also very important to, uh, you know, to keep things simple about how you use uh, software. And this is something at SAP that we're trying very hard is, you know, how do we make sure every user can use our software without really using it? Uh, and one of these examples here 
uh, is actually a very, uh, very simple example, but you will see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? So, imagine now you actually a field technician uh, for an automotive uh, company, right? So you work in the garage and uh, you would of course have to maintain different cars, different equipment, but also make sure that whatever you purchase is compliant with the spend under procurement that you have. So I have with me like, you know, three classic piece of equipment that you could find in any type of car. Um, here goes my last question for you, the last quiz. How many, you know, how many tools, little piece of equipment like this do you think you will need to make a car? I want to see how, you know, people like to make a normal car, not, 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 let's say not a formula one that is saying 10,000. It's a bit more, actually quite a bit more, more than 10,000, but 10,000, I have to argue, it would be a very nice little citadin car. 30,000, Magesh, you are on the spot. It's uh, it's yes, 30,000 is the average. Uh, so you can imagine a lot of different tools, a lot of different, uh, you know, um, size as well. So one of the ways that you can really empower people and allowing them to unlock uh, this whole, I will say, software benefit is by letting them use what we call conversational AI. So anyone will be able to, um, you know, connect. See, if I'm a field technician now, if I'm connecting to uh, an app that is basically an application that will link all the product catalog that all of those things are available, what I will do is, so you can see in bigger what I have on my phone here, okay? Uh, so I will be able to say, hey, um, I need to buy, you know, three of those little, uh, you know, equipment. So you'll go into your application, for example, decide to take a photo of this, okay. Yeah, that will do. Uh, then you send that uh, photo to the system. And basically what, uh, what we train the system to do, and as you can see here, a bit more detail is, uh, of course, the shape, uh, the color, so it's pure machine learning, but then connected to all your suppliers, connecting to, uh, to your you know, spend, uh, spend rules, basically, uh, and then allowing, uh, allowing people to, so you can look at the info, you can see all the, the suppliers that are providing it, how long it will take me to get it as well, uh, what is the price, so imagine, let's say I'm happy with this, uh, what I can say is, you know, I can directly tap into my system, say that I need to order uh, three of these adapter. Uh, that will send a procurement request to my manager, right? And yes, should take some time. And as soon as, there you go, so the requisition has been met successfully. Basically using chatbot and, and, and the manager can also say, hey, how many approval do I have to do today? Everything will be kind of looked at for you. Not only the best price, uh, the fastest supplier to get the tool, for example, even if it's a bit more expensive, so you can put your rules. Uh, but also, if there is, you know, a minimum spend that you will allow the field technician to do, then that order will be, you know, straight on be put into the system so you can get the equipment, you know, faster. Uh, so this was just an example to show you that, you know, outside a little bit industry for the zero, how do we make, um, you know, the, the software and the life of every user uh, easier as we, as we go forward, right? So, uh, look, that was me. Um, I was, it was, you know, a pleasure to welcome you virtually into the center. Uh, and if you have any, uh, thank you, uh, Magesh and David, for the awesome answer that you provided. And if you have any questions, you have my uh, contact details. So uh, thanks, everybody. And Sao, over to you. Yes. Hey, thank you, uh, Marvin. Wonderful. Uh, yes. So, so to summarize, uh, well, like, like uh, the, the, I was sharing uh, this four building blocks of SAP's uh, uh, so solution one is uh, intelligent product factory asset and uh, people and what uh, marvin showcased so he had you know showcased only few okay in, in the interest of time but the one which i am showcasing here is that you know uh, if, when you think about uh, intelligent uh, factory and and you know it can, factory cannot be intelligent without uh, connecting with the you know uh, the warehouse or to the outsource manufacturing and the feeder lines for example the component assembly final assembly packaging and another you know, distribution network okay so it's end to end when you talk about industry photo scenarios and uh, the the six scenarios what we are showcasing in the singapore, uh, singapore experience center and uh, today 
Marvin had shown only the final assembly with the manufacturing. And uh, if you visit a final assembly with manufacturing and advanced track entry, this two you got like you know, we had showcased today, but there are many more scenarios. So if you come to the center, you can you can you know see it in a contextualized uh, manner. So that's one. And similarly, from uh, asset intelligence point of view, we have got a number of scenarios. And today, you have seen only the asset manager. But there are many more scenarios which is currently running live in the center. And similar to this, the empowering people. And today, you had shown you you had seen only the procurement part. Okay, there are other scenarios also available in the center. Okay, so that's a summary, and uh, there are a few uh, customers' uh, stories uh, I, I actually collected to share today. And let me, uh, since we have got five more minutes, let me you know quickly touch upon only two or three three you know, success stories. So one is with respect to uh, a process industry, Severstal, uh, uh, which is a, a mainly operating in steel and mining in Russia. And uh, being an energy and asset intensive industry, their aim was to identify unauthorized energy consumption and act on real time. And with this uh, initiative, they're able to reduce the energy consumption up to 12 million USD annually. And as you see in this picture, so this solution has got uh, you know, all the requirement of managed by exception. It's, there is no need to people to sit across you know, a dashboard to monitor. So the system should be intelligent enough to give those exception and alerts. So you know the respective stakeholder can you know act on it. That is managed by exception is one. A digital twin, as you see here, uh, the factories or the plants and you know every you know uh, the equipments. So we we have created a uh, digital representation of uh, every physical assets assets. So that you know you can see it and can take the decision if there is any anything which is wrong and I need to take action. And then you know the, the, this has got uh, a capability like you know root cause analysis. So it's not only seeing but you know can you know uh, find out the reason why it's happening and can take you know corrective actions uh, as soon as it happens or you know or predict it to to happen as well. So this is one. This is purely from you know improving the bottom line. And with respect to safety, people's safety point of view. NLMK, it's uh, one of the fourth largest steel company in Russia. Okay, so they uh, and you know they have developed a, uh, a 3D positioning system for shop floor uh, employees in their continuous hot, deep galvanizing you know mill. Okay, and every uh, person in the plant they carry a uh, tag or a sensor. Okay, which has got a the location and they take the location and they you know. Combine that with the surrounding environment, the heat and any any potential danger, okay. And uh, and this has been you know uh, calculated uh, uh, in the cloud, and this has got a uh, capability to send the information to the employee if there is any potential safety issues, okay. They actually you know send a command and you know this this tag vibrates, and uh, and you know and this and based on that uh, uh, that you know uh, there will be a safe zone. And the person has to, you know, go and, uh, you know, uh, uh, take, take, uh, go, go into the safe zone to avoid any potential, you know, safety issues. Okay, so this is one from, you know, safety point of view, and uh, and if you move to the uh, discrete manufacturing industry, I picked up uh, two Audi and uh, Aisha. Aisha is from India, and uh, Audi, the plant where it's implemented is in Hungary, and the unique thing about this implementation is. Uh, that you know, if you go to any assembly line plant, let's say like in a conveyor belt, like you know, they keep uh, pop, uh, they will put things and they will uh, keep on assembling in the conveyor belt in respective uh, uh, like you know uh, assembly stations, and product moves and the mind comes out from the assembly line at, at the end of the line. Okay, so here the the the, the unique thing here is it's it's not a it's not a, as a conveyor belt. It's like you know, something called a cellular uh, manufacturing. Okay, and uh, and with the cellular manufacturing concept, uh, this plant from Audi, they manufacture the drive trains. So how it works is the AGVs, the automated guided vehicles, they carry the part and they go to the respective assembly line, and you know the AGVs will have a screen which will tell uh, the person or the uh, the production operator that you know what 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 product it is and what part needs to be assembled. 
and then now at the moment the agb goes it also triggers uh, the information to the warehouse uh, or nearby warehouse the what part you know they should be you know supplying to the respective assembly line so entire thing is connected and the intelligence is built within the agvs and then you know and this 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 tells the operator what to assemble and during assembly is does you know the quality check quality check is that you know what part what part to be assembled that is one thing and you know when you do the assembly there are a uh, few uh, you know production steps uh, or assembly steps needs to be done okay for example simple example is talk speed so it does that you know collect that talk speed from another you know, respective opc and checks whether in you know, the right talk speed is applied or not so these are some of the quality uh, you know parameters uh, which you know it checks at the point of assembly uh, to ensure that you know it, uh, the quality issues are not uh, you uh, know goes without uh, 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 any uh, undetected okay and the bsf it's all about uh, doing the maintenance by collaborating uh, with uh, the oems who is who is supplying the equipment to bsf and uh, uh, and uh, we know bsf is one of the uh, largest chemical manufacturers in the world having 400 production sites so their aim is to implement uh, the collaborative uh, you know uh, maintenance across all their uh, plants okay so that's in uh, that's actually the last slide i think yes there is one more so uh, like you, know, you can go into uh, this slide to get more information okay so about uh, uh, the detail about the strategy there are a lot of white papers and uh, and i have uh, living with uh, two uh, links uh, which i i had showcased before marvin came in and uh, so took you to the center uh, which covers the what what industry forum means to process industry there are a lot of videos a lot of literatures which will help you to understand and uh, and you know you can come up with your own, own ideas if you are missing anything okay and uh, yes so uh, yes so if you have more information let us know we'll be happy you know to get into a, a call and discuss more thanks everybody thanks i will again and uh, like i said in the chat if you have any question feel free to uh, to reach out if you wanted to know more and it uh, was a, a pleasure to uh, uh, to discuss with you today